Panther fans, get ready for a deep dive on all 22 because the, the film, film don't, don't lie. lie. Good thing you guys warmed up today. The yeah. pre-show for this show should be another show. Yeah, that's true. The pre-show should be this, another that show. Was that's a, right. The pre-show was a classic today. Yes. But guys, speaking of classic, Aaron Rodgers. Now, you know what? Sometimes you can talk yourself out of anything. And when I did the rundown for the show, I'm thinking, am I making too much of this? Hmm. I don't think you are. Maybe. I, well, I mean, the bottom line is there's 22 other guys, thus the term all, all 22, 22 because sure. the film don't lie. I mean, you That's guys so are like Pavlov. <laughs> oh, I, I love it. <laughs> In the patent thing. Post, post-mortem, all 22, you'd be walking down the street in Uptown going, the film don't lie. <laughs> yeah, but I, I, like, I know where you're coming from because, look, Aaron Rodgers is one guy on that team, and there's there's other deficiencies that's led to that seven and six record, but it's still Aaron Rodgers. So it's, it's kind of that quandary, you know. You know he's going to come back and and really add a lot to that team, but there's still some things that um, you know the Panthers can exploit if they if they're on their uh, A game on Sunday. Yeah, I, I mean it's Aaron Rodgers. I mean there's only a handful of people that can come off a, off the street and still sling it, and. Um, you know, the Panthers have played one of them already this year and, and Tom Brady, and that, that was a favorable win. You know, this is a game where it's still Aaron Rodgers and he still has those tangibles that you still got to respect. And, you know, you got to, when you have a head coach and you have a quarterback, you can kind of make up for some of those um, things that might be ailing or hurting or, or um, hampering the team. They certainly have that. And really, we could throw out the Cleveland Browns film. because I mean, it was no need of watching it because that team is, is not showing up on Sunday. This will be a different team. And I actually had to go back to that uh, game in 2015. Mm-hmm. And I called it a Barishnikov performance because the Panthers built a big lead in that game. And the thing about Aaron Rodgers that I watch closely is his footwork. He is a performer back there in the backfield as far as his footwork, buying time, and what kind of pressures is that going to place on this the Panther defense? I think, you know, when you watch the Minnesota film, you saw, um, you know, the Vikings quarterback and Casey, like he moved around at times. And when you have a guy that can move around with his feet, it makes you just honor that a little bit more than if you have a guy back there that is a statue. And I think with Aaron Rodgers, he'll buy time. He knows when it's time to run and slide. But he'll also make you think that he's running. But he might be running sideways. And he knows where that line of scrimmage is. And just as you start to come up, he'll dump that ball. So he is very smart. He's been around a long time. But the biggest thing about him, he's learned from the best. You know, and, and Brett Favre, you know, I got to play many games against Brett Favre. And, and they are cut out of the same cloth as far as being able to move and buy time with their feet. And I think that's something that he's going to have some rust throwing the ball. Uh, but running around, the feet are going to be good. And I think that's where the Panthers' defense has to keep an eye and keeping him in the pocket and being able to get hits on him early. You know, that, that 2015 game you're talking about, this is a guy that, um, you know, if you can apply pressure very quickly and get in his face, especially the guys right up front, you know, that 2015 game, they're trying to get back in the thing. He drives them all the way down the field. They're near the goal line. K1 Short basically beats a double team to get in his face so quickly that as he's trying to get rid of the ball, does not see Thomas Davis and, and didn't think, I guess, Thomas Davis could leap about four feet in the air, but made that miraculous interception that really sealed the deal for the Panthers' win that day. Um, you know, that he is a great player, but look, he doesn't walk on water. He's still a human being. And if you play, if you put, apply some serious pressure right in his face, uh, he'll make some mistakes. I, I see where you're going. So we're putting that puzzle together. You talk about pressure, but then pressure will be applied uh, to those cornerbacks. What are you seeing there from these young corners that we have? I thought they had a great game um, uh, as far as the turnover category against the Vikings. You know, and I think that um, they sometimes you just need a big game to kind of get you out of a rut. I know that they hadn't had a, a thousand interceptions, but this game they stepped up to the plate. And these weren't um, just uh, give me throws. These, these, you know, when you looked at Bradbury and Worley and you looked at their picks, um, you know, the eye on the ball. And, you know, I, I thought when I looked at Bradbury's pick, you know, it was off a tip, but it was, it was the position that he was in 
to make that athletic catch. And that was a big point in the game because the Vikings look like they're going to come in here and, and they're going to score. And that just really, really took the air out of them. And it really gave this defense that confidence because all of a sudden Worley has a pick early in the game that really just sets the tone. And then Bradbury has his. And then combined with the pressure up front, that just really turned to be a well-rounded defensive play. Yeah, no, you know, you mentioned that Worley interception early in the game. And really it's the fifth play of the game. And you don't know which way this game is going to go against the Vikings. And you're kind of thinking – um, you know, what's who's going to step up and be big time in this defense? They'd gotten a first down, looked like they were driving. And Daryl Worley, you know, as he's in coverage there, it's a little bit softer coverage. Adam Thielen, you know, releases off the line of scrimmage, kind of makes a little jab step to the outside, but then continues inside. It got Daryl Worley a little bit twisted, but he stayed with it. And I love the way his his radar kind of went off. That timer went off in his head. It's time to look back for this ball. And he made a great adjustment on it kept his eyes on it, and pulled in an interception that I think set the tone, as you said, for the entire game for the Panthers because that cornerback position has been struggling to get some interceptions. And to get off the snide with that, get that interception, uh, really, you know, I think just produced a lot of energy for this team that went on to win this game. One of the things uh, that was talked about, uh, we had uh, Curtis Fuller uh, on our self-scout segment uh, on Panthers.com and Panthers TV, and one of the things – that uh, he talked about is these guys getting to the point where they're believing what they're seeing. And I don't think there's a, a learning curve any larger on a position, maybe other than quarterback. But cornerback is such a tough position to learn in it, Mike. It is because you're out there on the island. As a defensive lineman, I got people around me. If I mess up, my linebacker could help me. My defensive tackle could help me. But if I'm out there one-on-one -on -one in space with the guy, if I slip – you know, there's no one else really to, to help or save me. And when um, you have guys that are out there that can play physically, that can the biggest thing that I like about our corners, they have a factor in the run game. And I think that that's key because some guys, especially in that secondary, they just want to be able to get interceptions and stuff like that. But when you can run a tackle, um, you're well-rounded. Well, I'm going to stay right there with you, Ruck, because we're going to talk about something near and dear to your heart. Playing defensive mm, end in the it. NFL, and I'm telling you what, every Boy. week it's an honor to come sit by a guy who did it to the highest level. Um, but talk about what you're seeing from Mario Addison. Well, I, I, you know, Mario and Pep, you know, and mm -hmm. I was like, wh which film, I mean, wh which one are we going to throw up on there? And when you put on either one of them, it's almost identical of them resetting the line of scrimmage. And Mario, you know, Pep's handing off this baton to Mario, and this is going to be Mario's defensive line moving forward at that defensive end position. Wow. And these two guys are both battling for the team leading sacks, right? So you got the young buck, and then you got Pep at 37. But in the run game, um, and, and Mario in particular um, comes in on a stunt. You know, uh, I think it was Kurt Coleman, the safety, comes down and blitz off the outside, and Mario has the B gap. And so he's just going to make a slant. He's going to plant that left foot, and he's going to drive up field. And when he drives up field, the tackle's now got to make a decision. Do I stay on Mario or do I move up to the linebacker? And I think the tackle thought he got enough push on Mario to knock him off balance. He was going to get two for one. But, no, Mario's low body, hitting that weight room strong, he makes that tackle for the loss. And, again, when you're able to get, as a defensive lineman, get a tackle for loss, that is huge. Tackle line scrimmage is great, but when you're taking a negative three off the off the table, a negative four, like you know Pep and, and Mario did in, in those two situations, um, that really helps the defense. And I think that that sets the tone because if a team can't run, they got to go to the air. And when they go to the air, you're seeing your corners get picks like we saw against the Vikings. So hand and glove there. Um, I, I mean, Pep, we talked about Pep as well. I mean, what we're seeing from him, especially right now with Charles Johnson being suspended. Uh, Pep stepping up, getting more minutes, and it's paying off. Yeah, and it really looks, you know, that the plan for him has just been great with resting him during training camp, giving him some uh, practices off during the season because there's this stretch run of the season where it's all hands on deck and you got to get your best players out there. And because of Charles Johnson's situation, Pep's getting more reps and the production – uh, has only increased. And last week, you know, just had a fantastic game. I think, you know, he's a guy that still at his age, he has a lot of tools in the toolbox. And, 
you know, you look at him, it's it's not just coming the, these sacks where he chased someone out of bounds behind the line of scrimmage. It's He actually uses his speed, his quickness, his power, and technique to get to the quarterback. Uh, the sack he got on Sunday, it was a beautiful play where he gets great get off, but just had great hand-eye coordination where he's able to strike that right tackle's hand down. And as a tackle, if you can't get a hand on that defensive lineman in some way, you're not going to be able to alter their path a little wider or deeper in that pocket. It really forms a, a short corner there because they can get around the edge quicker. And he just finishes the job with tremendous hustle. He knows he's got him. He knocked that hand down. He turns that corner and finishes the job to get home and get the sack. An important play in that game. And it's going to be fun to watch Mario and Pep down the stretch, yeah. both at nine yeah. and a half sacks. Mm -hmm. You yeah. know it's a personal bet that they got Absolutely. going. Who's going to have the lead at the end? Yeah, I mean, that's going to be exciting to watch. And I think Addison has, has benefited not only uh, from from Pep being in, back on the team, but also with Charles Johnson, uh, who is a great mentor to some of these young defensive ends. And also, uh, you can't discount uh, defensive line coach Eric Washington and Sam Mills and their, their impact. Because I, when I go out to practice and I stand around those defensive linemen, I always want to hear what you subversives are talking about. <laughs> That's what I call your defensive guy. I like it. I, and, and I don't think there's anybody who teaches play recognition and discipline more than Eric Washington. And uh, and you got to understand the impact of that. Uh, he's he's one he's one of the best. I mean, obviously this generation is, is football has changed because you got a younger generation, and so you got to coach and teach them differently. And he's been able to do it old school and new school. And he's had some good guys that he's been around. And as a coach, the good coaches, they learn from their good players. And he's had Pep twice. And so for him to learn from Pep and some of the other guys that he's had up in Chicago and, 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 and here, uh, I think that is really, really, he's one of the, one of the really good up-and-coming coaches that should get a look down the road. And, and look who we didn't talk about. I mean, the other guys on that line, not to uh, take any credit away. K1 Short, monster. You talked about him a little bit earlier. Okay. Last segment, a good offense is a great defense. That's right. Uh, what does the Panthers' offense have to do to keep Aaron Rodgers over there uh, mm. by the cat eyes on the – By the, the water. Yeah, by, by the, the water. Yeah, talking yeah. about the wall. Listen, offensively, this team has performed extremely well because of the run game and what they've been able to do to stay on the field and chew up that clock – keep drives going. And it's not just Jonathan Stewart and CMC. Obviously, it's Cam Newton with what he does. But I like this matchup. You know, the Panthers are a top five rushing attack. The Packers have not really performed high in that level in the bottom half of the league in terms of run defense. So the matchup's very favorable that if you can get a lead early, they play great with the lead. They're able to control the clock. That's how you attack this Packers defense. I think that, you know, they – They've had some success, not great success, getting after a quarterback. So, you know, I don't think there's a lot of pressure besides Clay Matthews. You know, he's their guy. He's a guy that can apply some pressure. But, you know, this is an offense that if they can get this running game going like it did last week and then prior weeks, that's the way to keep that Packers offense off the field, keep Aaron Rodgers on the sideline, let him be a problem for someone else next week. I think that one of the biggest things is recognizing – um, when the Packers defense is in man coverage. And for Cam to put pressure on, on that defense, they're going to come in this game, they're going to have to have someone spy Cam. So what, when he recognizes that, how can they take advantage of that and find that hole of where that guy is spying at and being able to dump the ball and continue to put pressure on the defense with his feet? He's going to be able to extend the plays, and I think that that's going to allow – that uh, that Aaron Rodgers and that offense to stay on the sideline, which then that favor meter starts to tilt towards the Panthers. And um, I, I think that that's going to be the biggest thing. I think Cam is going to be huge with his feet this game, uh, keeping that defense on their heels. I'll pick up a little bit on that because what I did pick up watching this Cleveland game, which is a head scratcher, if you've ever seen one, I, I had to figure out what happened. <laughs> and uh, I watched the, the Browns' offense versus the Packers' defense. And one of the things that jumped out at me was they didn't have, really have a commitment to the run, but they came out and attacked mm -hmm. that defense. And just the, the hint of run brought those linebackers up, and the safeties were bailing. So there was a huge, uh, what we call a vertical seam available. 
And so if you get them playing the run, the, the world is your oyster because mm-hmm. now you get that separation, linebackers step up to play the run, and then now you can hit in those horizontal seams. And one of the head scratches I had from last week's game was as good as the run game was, the Panthers weren't able to get the big shots in play action. And I think going down the stretch, you have to hit those big shots when you get a chance. They had the one uh, play where, uh, I mean, great fake, ball fakes all, all left, day, right. All I mean, day I long. I don't know what the run call. It was a run and a reverse. Mm-hmm. And then he turned and looked at Clay. And I just think the route didn't match the throw or vice versa. And you didn't hit that shot. Mm-hmm. Going down the stretch, you got to hit those shots. That's a philosophy I think will pay off. Well, Panther fans, we're out of time. But uh, remember, if it happens between the lines, we'll talk about it on all 22 because the film don't lie. We'll see you next time.